Hey everybody, um, to the other day I was thinking and I made a realization that, you know, in years past there's been years of my life where I had already had chameleons and I loved them and I thought about them regularly and I looked at them on the internet but I didn't have any of my own and I couldn't and, um, you know, there's a lot of fun adventures like I go to plant shows or go to chameleon stores pretty regularly and I just don't film them or anything or I don't even share my own all that often, I don't take videos of them so um, if you like this kind of content, please like and leave a message just because I'm going to start making some more videos just to see if I should make this channel more of a regular thing I do. But anyways, today I drove uh, quite a little bit to come to California Carnivores and I just found out recently, thanks to Bill Strand, that this is actually the largest carnivorous plant nursery in the world and it is in the outer skirts of the Bay Area in California, so this is pretty exciting. Um, we're gonna show you around. Okay, we're here in California carnivores, and there are tons of them in here doing so well. These are actually, they may not look like it because they look so pretty, but these are in fact the blossoms from pitcher plants. Wow, these are sundews down here. I doubt you can see, sorry. just tons of them. It's amazing. Look how big they get. I had no idea how big this, these plants can get. They look like a coral reef plant out of water basically. I should have been in here the whole time. Jeez. Why didn't we come straight in here? Oh wow, this one's so got so much stuff in here it's like unmanageable. Wow. Alright, I'm going in right now again this front area is like so many it's crazy <gasps> okay there's not real
just wanted to give a little bit of a recap after the visit to California Carnivores. Uh, for starters, it was a lot of fun. I actually learned a lot, and I saw a lot of Nepenthes that I personally never actually got to see in real life. Um, you know, I've been to a lot of reptile shows and plant shows and specific stores, even for carnivorous plants, and I've never seen so many. Um, so we definitely earned the reputation of having the largest uh, carnivorous plant uh, nursery in the world. Um, it was, I admit if it's in the world then that's not saying much because the nursery wasn't that big to be honest uh, and pitch plants don't grow super fast. I mean in a, a couple of years they'll grow a lot but I mean that's over a couple of years and the plants full grown don't get huge. If you want to see some amazing pitcher plants that are absolutely huge I can't speak for most of the world, but for the Bay Area at least, please go to the San Francisco um, Cons Conservatory of Flowers. Um, I know it sounds like it's only talking about flowers, but it's the conservatory it has tons of amazing plants from around the world, and it has the largest uh, pitcher plants that you'll ever see. They probably are actually bigger than most in the wild because they've been allowed to grow there and cultivated specifically for looking awesome and huge for years and years so they are like bushes they're literally like bushes or even like tree size and they're just breathtaking so if you just want to see that go there it's awesome um, i wish i had some pictures of that actually I, I might i might have some so i might attach some right after this but um thank you for watching guys uh, i learned a lot if you want to learn more about nepenthes style pitcher plants and keep in mind there are more different kinds of pitcher plants. Let me show you some examples actually right now. Um, I learned a bit. Um, so there's actually Saracenia Nepenthes that I talked about and Darling, Darlingtonia type uh, pitcher plants. And you can see some here. The Nepenthes are the ones that I like most, but there are some indigenous to the Pacific Northwest, uh, like the Cobra pitcher plant. These are, they're very hard to keep in captivity basically, but they're actually indigenous to North California, Oregon, Washington, and uh, basically the mountains. They need good sunlight and yada yada. Uh, don't want to bore you, but they are very cool and he did have some there. Um, I think he even had some that were for sale, but they're pretty expensive and he wanted to warn people they're hard to keep on your own. Uh, they need a lot of very fresh water to stay alive. But anyways, the ones that come straight out of the ground like this um, are also um, not just Darlingtonia, but also the uh, Saracenia. They're pretty cool. Um, some of these are, you know, pigeon plants can actually be found all over the world, really. And at the very least, there are some kinds of carnivorous plants indigenous to every single continent except our Antarctica. Um, so it was pretty cool. Um, I ended up getting two. One of them was called, um, I couldn't get any of the really cool ones that I really wanted to have, like the Macrophilia, here's a picture, as well as I wanted the Necrophilia that I could not get, just simply would not sell it to me. Um, he said I couldn't afford it even if I wanted it, so he said they're so rare right now that he needs it for cutting so he can sell them, but anyways, um, came a price for that one, must think I'm poor, I don't know, anyways, the other one that I really wanted, oh, I'm sorry, no, the one that I did get was called Nepenthes Rocatlii, which, the one I got is kind of small, but just look at this picture of how big they can get, so I have a Rocatlii now, which you cannot find on, like, eBay or Amazon at the very least, maybe there's a specialized website for this stuff, but... Anyways, I'm excited, guys. Um, I got, I learned a lot. Um, the sanguinea is sadly, Nepenthes sanguinea is sadly one of the only common ones that you can basically find. Um, if you're wonder, wondering what I'm looking at, by the way, there's an app called Nappy. And Nappy has a list, I don't know if you can see this, it is a list of just tons of different Nepenthes style pitcher plants, which is really interesting. So you can actually find any kind of pitch plant just about on that wet, uh, on that phone app. Um, there's plenty of them missing from that app, but there's quite a few out there. And 
Yeah, and there's just so many interesting and weird looking pitcher plants. I mean, like, look at this one. Like, that is like a birdhouse pitcher plant, but if a bird went in there, it would die. So, this specific style pitcher plant might even be a bird eater. I don't know. But, anyways, super cool, guys. If you live in uh, the Bay Area or the North Bay, especially, or even Oregon, it might be worth your visit to come down here. They do have a website, but you can't hardly buy anything from it. So if you want anything from them, you basically have to be a wholesaler or you have to go there and just be nice to the guy. Um, to be honest, the guy was a little bit grumpy when we got there. It was like the end of the day. He was tired. His name is uh, Peter de Atelio. He wrote the book The Savage Garden uh, and the revised versions and such. And he's a really nice guy if you give him a minute of your time to tell, tell him why you like the plants and such. He was really uh happy actually he was surprised i think i was the first one that came in a store that said hey i heard about you on the chameleon breeder podcast um thanks to bill strand he's like oh that's on the air already wow i thought that'd take a month he was here just last week so um thank you bill strand let's call out to you um spread the good word of cool ass uh pitcher plants they are awesome guys and a lot of fun and a great addition to uh your chameleon enclosures um, speaking of enclosures, I've got a video coming out soon of my new um, greenhouse enclosure. It's made specifically for being a greenhouse for pitcher plant type species of plants, as well as a greenhouse for chameleons to have fun in. Um, yes, it is a greenhouse, so UVB will be in short supply because there's simply no uh, materials that are reasonably priced at all whatsoever that lets UVB through. Um, I mean, even just glass blocks UVB. Um, all plastics, even the thin little sheets, they all block UVB. So I have a window in it, a smallish window that is just the uh, welded wire and no no screening of any kind. So. Um, I don't know, I'm sad to say it lets out so much air, uh, warm air, that I might have to seal it up. I don't know. But nonetheless, I have a bunch of other cool enclosures that um, I have videos of and will continue making more videos about as the plants grow bigger and just show them off and see um, what my chameleons like to do in there. Anyways, um, stay tuned for that video. If you like just hearing about um, plants and learning more about chameleon breeding and chameleon enclosures and plants, that's kind of my specialty. I'm not really into other reptiles or amphibians. I, I will say I like salamanders. Anyways, if you like this kind of material, guys, please uh, drop me a like and a message uh, or subscribe as well because uh, the more subscribers I have, I promise you that is my biggest and best indicator of whether people actually like this content and if I should make more videos. So, um, yeah, please subscribe, guys. Uh, I think I will start making this a regular thing. So thank you for watching, guys.